There's an offensive boom in the league, people. That is causing records to break all the time, it seems. Here's a little proof. On Wednesday, James Harden, Russell Westbrook, Nikola Jokic, Ben Simmons, Draymond Green, and DeMontis Sabonis all recorded triple doubles. Those six players liking a triple double on the same day broke the record of five, which was set just four days earlier. <laughs> that's not the only record that's toppled more than once recently. According to Mike Lynch of Basketball Reference, this season features eight of the nine best offenses in NBA history, according to offensive efficiency. The other that's offense, by the way, last year's Dallas Mavericks. So again, all within the past two seasons. The surge in three-point shooting has definitely continued this trend. Looking at combined attempted threes per game, nearly 35 are taken in an average today. That's nearly double what it was 10 years ago, five times what it was 30 you years ago. Seven threes in the 90s? To yes. further illustrate this point, Larry Bird, who entered the <laughs> league right as the three-point shot was introduced in 79-80, that widely regarded as the best three-point shooter of his time. Well, guess what, guys? He averaged two, two three-point shots a game in his career. Steph Curry, who is, of course, regarded as the best three-point shooter ever, and certainly of his time, basically averages more than that in a quarter this season so everyone gets the point now i am sure robert we're going to start with you how much should we put like how do you judge stats the other night right anthony edwards first rookie right to hit 40 since kevin durant and lebron james do you put him in the kevin durant lebron james category because he did that or is scoring inflate like it's hard to, how do you judge these stats you hear it's, it's so hard to judge this because back when richard and i played as you saw the stats, we didn't shoot that many threes. The game is a lot faster. There's so many things, elements to this game. If you really watch a game, I would love to see how many times a guy scores off a of travel. Mm -hmm. How many times a guy scores off a of carry. There's so many rules that are being broken that the NBA are allowing. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that kind of upsets me. Even yeah. when you shoot a three now, if you jump, mm -hmm. the guy... Yep. Catapults in towards you, and it's a foul, and you go shoot the threes, I mean, the, the free throws. So those are things that the NBA and the stats and all these things don't come into play. But I'm happy that these guys are doing this mm -hmm. because it makes the league look good. But I still <laughs> say that I don't like it because there's too many threes, and guys just go to the free throw line way too much for me. I like that bump right there by Rick Mahorn. But this is, this is <laughs> I, I guess, the, the, the best way to really, like, break this down is that all these teams that are doing what they're doing it is impressive but understand there is no fans in there there is no fans <laughs> in there and travel has changed we yeah. saw elevated numbers in the bubble. bubble and maybe this is kind of like maybe that was kind of a little bit of a foreshadowing into what we are right now numbers are elevated travel is different players are not allowed to go and be social <laughs> they're not allowed to go out in certain cities are you saying that Miami flu is not no the effect? Miami flu is not real <laughs> like it, it's there you know so so that's the thing we saw elevated numbers in the bubble because players were really just focused yeah and so I'm not surprised here that with the rule changes the three-point shots no fans and different travel schedules and you're not allowed to go out and be social that offenses are through the roof everybody wants to be like Steph now you remember when we were coming up we want to be like MJ and MJ was dunking on people, but yep. now everybody wanted to J up from three. Mm -hmm. So that's the trend too. Now kids at home are watching this and say, oh, to make it to the league, I gotta shoot threes. Mm -hmm. I'm scared where it's gonna be in 10 years. If this, <laughs> and I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean like if Steph I don't is, mean scared in a bad way. No, no, yeah, you could be scared in a good way. <laughs> like, yo, you see that? You see, you see, you see that? You, you got a seven foot center shooting threes. That's yeah. scary. You got Joel and B doing step backs like he's a keen. Right? It's that part is scary. What's really strange is like if kids are watching this right now and they see Steph and Dame shooting and making the ball from half court. Mm -hmm. What are they going to do? Like, when I watched MJ, I went and tried to work on the fadeaway. I didn't, couldn't do it the way he did it, but yes. I had it. No, the crazy thing is, after you watch an All-Star game, no matter if you're in high school, college, Ooh, what you, you see, yeah, you go you out and work do. on the next day. Now, <laughs> yeah. I guarantee you, half the kids in America went out and started trying to shoot threes from half court because that's what we saw on the NBA TV. Okay, so I like that big men are more skilled. It makes the game yeah. more fun for me as a fan. I like these guys shooting. I, I get excited when Damian Lillard pulls up from the logo. I'm like, woo, there he goes. You know, this that's fun. I have no problem with any of this. The problem I am having as someone whose job it is to sit here and analyze the game every day <laughs> is how do you yes. put, how do you compare, right? How do you have those comparisons? And when you're talking about comparisons between players of this era, like when we judge MVP stats or something like that, on the one hand, 
they're all playing in the same game, right? So you should feel like, okay, well, these stats are comparable. But one of the arguments for Giannis for MVP last year, and I voted for him, so this argument mattered to me, was these numbers aren't just good or better than some of the other guys in the league. They're historic. He was doing, he was putting up numbers in categories, four or five categories that had never been done before. And I was like, well, that, that means something to me. But as we have seen the continuation of score inflation, as we go to judge that this year, as we sit here and say, man, not so many, you know, triple like doubles. like the steroid or era in baseball? Anthony Edwards. Well, I don't know. <laughs> like, how do you put those into, into sort of, how do, you, how do you put the whole picture into it? It's hard, and I think you can only do it after multiple years. So, like, next year, mm -hmm. we, can, we can talk about it this year, and we can point out all the numbers, but then next year, okay, let's see if the scoring drops a little bit because players are, can go out, and then there, there's, you can be more social, and then you have fans in there. Mm -hmm. So, let's see if those numbers drop. And then in two or three years, I think, to do it in the moment, we can just be enjoying and knowing it, but knowing that the best, still the best defenses, even though they're not great defenses in historic standards, mm -hmm. are still going to be the teams that win championships. But right. When that word analytics came into basketball, that's when they messed it up because everybody says three is more than two. Yeah. Now everybody wants to shoot three. So everybody looked at this Golden State Warriors team. So they're shooting threes and winning championships. This is a different type of beast. They have guys that are elite. You don't have elite guys that shoot threes. So you're not going to be in the same category. So everybody always try to take that model and duplicate it, but you can't sometimes. So this and is you, why you And you got to be threes. smart. When you got a guy like DeAndre Ayton, this is one of my beasts. DeAndre Ayton is one of the most talented young big men. Bear down, love the kid. But he's shooting like three free throws a night. Mm -hmm. You're a seven-foot dude built like David Robinson. Yes. <laughs> and I think that that is a crime. And he's a good roller, mm -hmm. and maybe he's not as aggressive, and maybe he needs to work on some things. Mm -hmm. But the fact that you have a seven-footer that is sh the number one pick in the draft that is averaging, you know, 18 and whatever, shooting two free throws a game means that there's a lot of physicality that is lost. And he could dominate down there with the size and skill that he has. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.